Alright guys, so before we get on with this unboxing slash review, let's go ahead and go over a few specifications. The native resolution is 640x480 and the maximum resolution is 1920x1080. Now don't be fooled by that maximum resolution, as it is only the maximum resolution at which the projector can take in. What it actually spits out is a different thing, known as native resolution, which is known as the physical array of pixels within the actual projector. So even though you can have a 1080p input, you're only going to get a 640x480 output. So make sure you keep that in mind before you see a, an ad for a projector 1080p. Wow, you need to keep that in mind. Moving on, the brightness of the bulb is 300 lumens, and the contrast ratio is 300 to 1. We've got 2.62 million colors packed in this thing. Both the lens and keystone correction are both manual, which I believe is a much better and easier way, and it gives you more control over adjusting your setting. The projection distance is 4.10 to 13.13 feet, and the projection size on the screen is 30 to 130 inches. It'll definitely begin to get blurry at that max projection size. A few other specifications include two 2-watt two 8 decimal speakers built in, as well as a TFT LCD technology which the projector uses. Alright, so with all those specifications out of the way, let's go ahead and dig right in. So, we just open this and we're met with a lot of styrofoam, which is a huge, huge plus. This is really, really nicely packaged. So, on the top, styrofoam, and we are met with two manuals to help us know how to use this. We've also got a power supply, a remote, and an audio video cable which puts it into a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is pretty cool. And right here is the actual projector, which as you can see is very, very small, easily carryable, uh, portable. It's very light. I mean, I can throw it in the air, as you can see, and it's super light. And it also comes with a small, like, lens cover to keep it safe. All right, guys, so now we're going to move on and talk about the physical features of the projector, which include the inputs as well as the buttons. So on top, we've got a few buttons, and starting from the left, this is our power button, a source button to cycle through media such as VGA and HDMI, a menu button to pull up our menu, and then arrow keys to move throughout that menu. On the back, we've got a few inputs, or a lot of inputs, excuse me. So right here we've got a 12 volt power in, 5 volt power in, HDMI, VGA, audio video in, as well as audio out. And our keystone correction is right here. And this vent right here puts air in, and then it comes out on this side right here. And then we've got a USB 2.0 port, as well as a micro SD, or excuse me, just SD. And uh, yeah, so moving on this side, there's nothing. And then on the front, we've got our lens with a removable lens cap. And like I said, this is manual, so you can move it around just like this. Go ahead and put that back on. And on the bottom, we've got a mounting spot. So you just unscrew this and then mount it to wherever you'd like. As well as our two speakers, with one being right here and here. Now everyone knows that glossy plastic gets really fingerprinty, as you can see. It looks good, but when it gets fingerprints on it, it's just kind of disgusting. So you're going to have to clean that a lot if you want to keep it looking nice. So here's the remote. It's just a basic remote. It doesn't come with battery, so I had to put some in there. It takes two AA, AAA, excuse me. And uh, nothing to, you know, write home about, but it's a nice remote. And we've got basic function media keys down here, power button, uh, menu, back, um, some arrow keys, OK button, and our 1 through 9 and 0 keys. So, uh... Side. Here is our audio video in going to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack size. Pretty cool. And finally, we've got our 12 volt power supply right here. Let's go ahead and plug this thing up and see how she performs. Alright, guys, so as you can see, we've got the projector plugged in and powered on. And I don't know if you guys can hear this, but the fan is actually pretty loud when you've got the 12 volt power supply plugged in. So unfortunately, that's the case, but hopefully you've got an audio method which will drain some of that fan noise out. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about some of the menus. So we've got picture mode user, which is pretty much the color and trash and brightness, as well as some tint. We've got the color temperature, which is pretty much your red, greens, and blues. We've got your aspect ratio, and then we've got a screen tab, which will pretty much just help us select the size and the phase of just, just help edit you know the screen size and stuff like that. 
And then we've got the flip up, which uh, if you've got your projector mounted sideways or vertically, then you can set up the appropriate orientation for that right here. So moving on, let's go ahead and go into the sound tab, which uh, we've got our sound mode, which we can edit our treble and bass. Then we've got balance, which will help us with left and right speaker. Auto volume, pretty much set the volume for us, depending upon whatever we're playing sound-wise. Then we've got surround sound. And finally, at the bottom, we've got our EQ. Moving on, we've got a clock and just display time, so you can set timers or sleep if you want your kids or whatever to get off by a certain time. We've got the options, which is pretty much we can blend some of the picture, we can restore factory defaults, set your language, and OSD duration. Which is Alright guys, so once you've got your USB drive plugged in, you're going to want to hit your source button and scroll down to USB. And then it'll pull up the USB or SD menu, which is the same. So here we can view our photos, music, movie, or text. Bombshell flash drive from QuakeCon, and I put a review up here for you guys. I don't really want to include any copyrighted content for a monetized video. So if you just hover over it, you can get a live view, which will actually play. And if you want to open it up, just hit the play button. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. And then it'll come up big screen, and there's me. And that is the quality. Now, as I was saying, it does have that keystone correction. So as you can see, it's very blurry at the top. And then you just kind of do that with the keystone correction and then as I was saying the lens is manual so I can make it really blurry which is most likely how it'll come in the box so here's about as sharp as it will get now as picture quality goes for a hundred and nine dollars this is not bad this has a lot of functionality for it it's got tons of input methods I mean the USB view is pretty cool how you can view all your photos and videos and stuff like that We've got tons of media controls on the remote, which will make it really easy to come around. So, uh, if there's any of you out there that want to use this for gaming, here's a quick view of what that would look like. Like I said, two speakers on it, and you can actually adjust the volume with the arrow keys on your remote or on the projector itself. Now, the standard Xbox that did not come with an HDMI just had the audio video out, which was 480p. So that is actually not going to look any different from this if you use that as your output. Now I've got an HDMI plugged into it and uh, it's 720p. So here's a little demo of the quality you'll get from gaming. We have to go. Now keep in mind this is a pretty old game. I'll just play a little bit of it. with the blood. Are you okay? Look, we have maybe 10 minutes. Maybe. Now, obviously, the quality from your guys' perspective from the camera isn't going to be as good as my quality, which in real life, but it should be pretty darn good. So, hopefully you guys got a pretty good idea of a quality that you will get out of this projector. For 109 bucks, I think this thing is a pretty darn good deal. Now, I did want to go over one more thing, and that is the 5 volt power method. So we'll go ahead and plug that up, and I'll show you guys just how bright the screen is. All right, guys, so we've got the 5 volt power plugged in. This is a 2 amp port, and as you can see, it's a lot darker than the actual 4 amps that we received from the power supply. So essentially, if you think about it, this is half the brightness that it can give off. I wouldn't say it's impossible, but it's definitely a lot harder. Now, the thing I think is super cool is that who would think that you could essentially have a TV, almost, just at a very dark setting, obviously, on the brightness, but be able to power it from a micro USB cable. I think that's pretty incredible. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like I said, for 109 bucks, you get a lot out of this thing. And I definitely recommend this projector. I'll leave a link to this in the description below if you want to go check it out. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Anyways, guys, that is going to be a bit 